We are built for uncertainty. We are built for tough times. We are made for adversity. When you make a decision to be better, when you make a decision to do more and to be more. We must put on that suit of armor we must disconnect ourselves and stop being prisoners to the sadness to the fear. And these battles that we must face has different stories connected to it. These battles that we face each and every day of our lives has many things that sometimes we just don't feel that. We're prepared for we must find a way in an understanding that this thing that we are dealing with right now in our lives is only temporary, it's temporary and it will not last. Forever you must realize that you must grow enough tenacity within yourself to press on we are all going to face many battles in our lives and some of these battles we will not always win these days. And we are more powerful together than any enemy we will ever face. We are bigger than this. We will get through this. We are stronger than this. As long as we play our part. You can either be a part of the problem or a part of the solution. You will either help the situation, not only your situation, but the situation of the people in your life and the people on this planet, or you won't. So quiet the fear, quiet the worry, quiet the anxiety, quiet the stress, quiet the frustration, quiet that voice in your mind that tells you that you can't, that you can't get through this, that things will get worse, that maybe you're just not strong enough. Quiet that voice, quiet the doubt. Don't let the thoughts that you can't handle this take up any access space in your mind. What did you want your life to be like? She goes, well, it sounds stupid. I said, it's not going to sound stupid to me. She said, well, I don't know. I just always, since I was a little girl, dreamed that I would be married and I would have three basically perfect children and they would love me totally and I love my husband, he loved me. And I said, okay, so how's that working for you so far? And she said, well, I think you know She's a pretty famous person. She said, I'm divorced twice. I have no children. And you know, I'm now X age. And to give you a clue, that age would be an age where having a child, your own natural child at least, barring a medical miracle is not going to happen. So I said to her, well, why don't you just adopt? She goes, no, 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 that's not it. And so what I had to dig under is, remember we talked in one of the earlier sessions about there's the surface problem, and then there's the deeper desire or need. So I said to her, I said, well, hello and welcome to your day, a day of fulfillment, a day of opportunity, a day of opportunities or challenges that may come your way. What are your expectations? What is it that you ultimately want? Where are you looking to do it? It's time for you to stop wandering in the wilderness and start focusing on the journey at and pushing yourself forward and working as hard as you can. It's only a fraction of what this journey is going to be all about. Will you be prepared? Are you prepared? Will you accept the fact that your birth was no accident? Quiet those voices and raise the volume on hope. Raise the volume on courage. Raise the volume on progress. That is what we are made for. We are built for progress. We are made to move forward. No matter what happens to us, we are designed and will always find a way to move forward. We always find a way to define the odds as daunting as they may seem. We are built to weather the storms that life throws at us. That is what we are made for and we can get through this. We will get through this. We can win and we will win together. You filed bankruptcy and you stopped moving? You got fired and you stopped? Did you get divorced and you just stopped moving? You got cut and you just stopped? When my basketball career was over, I didn't stop moving, why? Because I'm a shark. What if you couldn't have the husband, but you could have the kids? And she smiled and she said, I'd take that. <laughs> I said, well, why not adopt a kid? She goes, no, it has to be my own blood children. So I kept digging to find out what was behind her blueprint. Because your blueprint is just a projection of what you think you need to be happy. But as human beings, we're notoriously ineffective at knowing it's going to make us happy. So much that we think we're going to make us happy, we get there and we go, is this all there is? So many things that we think are going to make us miserable and we can never deal with, we go through it and we can handle it. We're not good at projecting these things. All kinds of studies will show this. So I said to her, well, what, what are you hoping to get from these three children? Why do they have to be your blood children? And she finally said, well, if they're my blood children, I know they'll always love me. They'll never leave me. What was she looking for? Unconditional love. She had this big blueprint that said, 
White House, picket fence, three children, perfect husband, you know, all these different things. But what was behind that was a need, a need to feel like she could have love that would be certain and wouldn't go away. What makes life so unique and so beautiful, it is beautiful because whatever you have that you may be facing, what you may be dealing with, life is still good. Life has so many moving parts, but life is always good. Every day is a new day and another opportunity that others may not have. This life that you have been given, this life that you are temporarily holding on to, this life that has been just given to you for only temporary reasons, has more meaning than you can ever imagine. So many people in the world take life for granted instead of realizing that you have to take the opportunity to live it. Because it's going to be a forever company. It's not something we're looking to just build up and sell. And so if it's going to be a forever company, what are the things it would have to accommodate? And for me, there are two pandemics that I believe is my calling to address. Uh, pandemic one is the pandemic of the body. You got people two, three hundred pounds overweight and they're dying of malnutrition. Really impacted my family. I've already lost people that I love um, to food, essentially. Didn't want to lose more. But the other is the pandemic of the mind. And you've got people who, on the sort of bright and cheery side of the um, spectrum, just feel lost. Uh, feel that the system is corrupt and broken and having gone from scrounging in my couch cushions to find enough change to put gas in my car to, you know, fantastic wealth, all through hard work, discipline, learning, learning to um, get the timing right, all that stuff, um, I realized that it is the mindset that's holding them back and I want to know what happens to the world if we find the next 1,000 Elon Musks. Self-discipline comes when you decide that you're going to make a mark on the world. And if you think that you're not disciplined or you can't be disciplined, it's because you haven't yet decided to be disciplined. It's because you haven't created that discipline yet. So make the decision, make the commitment, discipline, the root quality that will improve every aspect of your life and it'll make you better and stronger and smarter and faster and healthier and most important like what happens I, i've worked a lot in the inner cities from uh, i big brothered for eight years when um, i was younger and saw what it really really means to grow up hard and um, I big brothered for this kid who was adopted and being abused and I was the ward of the court when they took him away from his family and so I'm through that so I've seen like the real impacts of generational poverty and then when we were doing manufacturing in the inner cities again working with people that just really really have suffered at the hands of what I call generational poverty which is a mindset it has nothing to do with money I mean it, it echoes in money because they don't understand it and they don't know how to escape that sort of vicious cycle of keep your head down do as little work as possible and avoid punishment. Um, but so that I wanted to be able to do that um, and I feared that the I wasn't going to be able to make the two gel and that it would um, be bolting something on to this thriving beautiful amazing business I didn't want to confuse it but for me like that's a must in my life it'll make you free there are no shortcuts there are no hacks if you want to take the easy road I promise you it's longer and more painful than the hard road I know. I've lived it. I've ventured down the easy road at times in my life, and it never led to anywhere good. The positive things in my life always came when I faced the biggest challenges. I joined the Navy. I took the hard road in the Navy and made it into the SEAL teams. There, I had the honor of leading men in combat. I learned some lessons along the way, lessons that have been tested on the battlefield and when implemented lead to success in any arena. One of the best things I've learned is that anyone has what it takes to travel the hard road. There are many different animals, creatures that roam throughout this desert and things out here get eaten or they eat. And you have to ask yourself, which one are you? Because no matter what's going on out here, the art of survival is to survive. To live and that's what these animals do so what kind of animal are you are you really hungry are you driven are you determined do you want it are you going to do everything that is necessary to get it because there's no pity out here in this desert if you don't go after what it is that you are seeking to satisfy your hunger
what's left is right Chasing stars and holding you I can't see the end, but we'll see it through Keep the sky on your mind 